Without any further ado, our top table today is uh, Cam Bell on the uh, left, as you look, Chief Executive of Hockey Australia, and uh, Victor Osler with the new introduction, and I'll talk back to Victor Cam. Thanks, Lawrence. Um, Look, thanks everyone for coming along today. It's, uh, it's a really good turnout. It's a really important announcement. Um, I'm going to read from a, a prepared speech so, uh, and then throw to Rick. Uh, it is today that I can officially confirm that on behalf of the Board of Hockey Australia uh, that Rick Charlesworth will be finishing his tenure as the men's national coach uh, after this year's Commonwealth Games. This is Rick's decision and Rick's alone. Um, and I think in today's sport and coaching climate, that is incredibly rare. Uh, there's not too many coaches that go out on their own terms, and particularly when the team is ranked the number one team in the world, as the Kookaburras are at the moment. Although this position of Rick's not continuing has been out in the hockey world and the sports world uh, for a little bit of time, I started as CEO in August of last year, and uh, I was never going to let Rick leave without he and I at least having a discussion about whether there was a slight chance of him continuing and whether he would change his mind. I think when you have someone of Rick's calibre in the senior coaching role, you don't let them go too quickly, particularly when you're a new CEO to the sport. So it was about four weeks ago on my request that Rick and I sat down, uh, had a discussion, the discussion I'd been looking to have with Rick, uh, and asked him to consider his position one last time. And despite my enormous persuasive powers, I wasn't able to uh, convince him to uh, change his mind. Rick will confirm and outline those reasons shortly, uh, as soon as I've finished my um, introduction speech. But those, those reasons haven't really changed from, um, from when I first started. On behalf of Hockey Australia, and particularly on behalf of the board um, of Hockey Australia, it is important to recognise publicly here today Rick's outstanding achievement to the sport. Um, we discussed it in a board meeting and it is a significant career um, and needs to be appropriately recognised and that's what we're here to do today. Uh, a press release, or I think it's already out on, on, the, on the chairs, uh, uh, will outline uh, and showcase Rick's remarkable career, but it's important to note that there are two significant steps still to go, and that is the World Cup and the Commonwealth Games. It's with this in mind that we've decided to call the press conference today to uh, allow the media and everyone to ask all the questions of Rick that maybe they haven't had the chance to ask so far, because it is really important that after today, um, that we continue to move forward towards those two significant events, the World Cup and the Commonwealth Games, without distraction. And as much as we are recognising Rick today, we are also moving forward from, from the end of today towards those two events, which uh, the program is well and truly prepared for um, and is going incredibly well. I will add that in the next two to three weeks, uh, I will outline a little bit more about the process to replace uh, Rick as coach. It's a near impossible task when you're trying to replace someone like Rick, and so quite simply we will look to find the best coach we can possibly secure. Um, the one key point I want to make about that process today is the fact that there will be no appointment made until after the Commonwealth Games. As I've said, that we are incredibly focused on these next two significant events and the coaching process will mirror that and there will be no appointment until well after the Commonwealth Games. Uh, before I conclude, and, and I throw to Rick, who's, who's going to read a statement um, and then take all your questions, I would like to add that Rick's working life as an elite athlete, elite coach, federal politician, high performance coach in international cricket, high performance coach in AFL, doctor of medicine, is just in, is truly remarkable um, and is unlikely to be repeated anytime soon. A number of people have also told me about Rick the person, the family man, the mentor um, and the influence he's had on so many careers, not just on the pitch but off the pitch and I think that's as significant as his outstanding achievements uh, throughout his sporting life and in particular uh, in hockey. Although I've only worked with Rick for a short time, he is without doubt one of the greatest coaches that Australian sporting uh, history has ever produced. His record is truly remarkable and uh, for those that have been in the sport a long time or if you've been in the sport a short time, 
when you see his record of success. It, it, is, it is truly astonishing. But supporting that is the incredible integrity that he has shown and displayed throughout uh, to achieve that success. So behalf, on behalf, I should say, of every athlete, staff member, a board member who's ever worked with Rick or worked for Rick, uh, can I simply say thanks, good luck for the future, and let's try and add to the trophy cabinet before we finish. Thanks very much, Cam. Uh, I won't uh, be reading from a statement. I'm a better ad libber, I think, than <laughs> that. Um, but uh, what I... Uh, the, the decision is not an easy one, and it's a great honour to, uh, to have the role of, as a coach of the national team. It was uh, maybe two or three years ago when I first thought about this issue when I was approached by Mark Anderson, the previous CEO, um, about extending uh, my contract uh, to Rio and I said to him at the time I thought uh, that was too far for me to see at that time and indeed uh, we settled on a time frame this year and uh, I've given it a lot of consideration over that period of time. If you want to be the national coach in any sport uh, then you have to be uh, fully focused on it. It's a 24-7 job and it's uh, very demanding and I think I, over the last couple of years I've come to the realisation that I, I want to realign my priorities and uh, while it might seem uh, very uh, banal, um, those uh, priorities uh, that, I'm, uh, that, that need the most attention in my life uh, over the next period of time are my wife, my, uh, my children, uh, some of whom are uh, well beyond uh, being under my, my care, but uh, certainly, um, and uh, I now have grandchildren, and I, I want to. Uh, I don't want to be away from uh, home three months a year, as you're required to be in this job anymore. And so, uh, that's, if you like, the basis of my decision, and it's purely. Uh, a judgment by me. I think coaches can stay for too long in the in the job, and teams need to be continually refreshed. and And uh, if you're in the job, then you have to have the life and energy to do that. I have it at the moment for this job, um, but I uh, I don't imagine that I'm it it, it would have the same uh, importance for me uh, if I was to continue uh, for another couple of years, as suggested. And it, you know, you said well. You want me to stay. That presumes, of course, that at my age you still have the, f the faculties to do so. Some of the players would already be questioning that, I'm sure. <coughs> but uh, this is, I'll tell this little story. This is an incident that occurred a couple of years ago, which uh, is the sort of thing that sometimes wakens you up. We were playing, uh, I was down in Rockingham watching our A team play in uh, 2011, and uh, there was a guy taking my photograph on the sideline and I said to him, what are you doing? You're stalking me. And he said, oh no, I'm, uh, I've been told by the boss I've got to take your photograph. I don't know who you are, but he said you were important. <laughs> and, you know, I figured I was a minor celebrity. I should have been known. But anyway, that was a little bit of a, uh, a knock to the ego. Two weeks later, we were playing out here against Pakistan and I was adjusting my earpiece before the game and he was still there with his camera. And I said, you are definitely stalking me. And he, and he said, I, I know who you are now. I thought you were dead. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I started to think I've been around for too long. Um, <clears throat> but I, uh, I, uh, I've had uh, the great privilege of being coach of the, the national team with the men uh, for the last nearly six years and for the women for a period earlier than that. It's something that I fell into accidentally, um, but I found uh, it incredibly rewarding. It's a, a job in which you uh, get to help a lot of uh, talented, hardworking and ambitious young people realise their potential. And uh, for me, it's been, it's been a very, uh, very satisfying job, something that I'm very privileged to have been involved in. And but I think it's appropriate for me now to uh, 
as I said, realign my priorities and uh, that's what I intend to do. I'll always be watching and interested in how our teams are going. I, uh, I love this game and I think that what I always tried to do as a coach was to create teams that were uh, exceptional, teams that did things better than everybody else, that pushed the margins, that uh, extended themselves, that uh, tried to dominate and change the game. And uh, I hope that uh, those sorts of uh, teams are the teams that, it, that uh, we've had. And I expect that uh, later on this year we can further embellish that, uh, that performance record. I'm happy to answer questions. I don't think there's uh, anything else I wanted particularly to say. Oh, this, this this sort of thing grows on you over over time. And uh, I I have a daughter who lives in London. I have another daughter who lives in Sydney. She's now got two grandchildren. Um, I hardly get to see them, and uh, I, you have a busy schedule. And in, and I have two boys who are still at school who uh, who uh, like to see their father about. You know, so uh, those sorts of things. And a, and a long suffering uh, wife who. Uh, doesn't see enough of me, she probably will regret this decision in a year or two. <laughs> um, so, I, and, and uh, you know, there was a period uh, in between coaching hockey teams where we lived in Italy, we lived in New Zealand, we lived in India. So we've had pretty rich experiences, uh, but, uh, but it's, for, for me, I think uh, um, this is the right thing I always thought, and indeed in my first book, and there'll probably be another one at some stage, um, that, uh, I thought six years was as long as you ought to be in this job and I'm getting up to that. So I think that's about right. Kind of touched on, how, how demanding has the roles been, been through the number of roles in hockey, but how demanding has it been over the Well, when you're doing it, you're away um, for three months of the year, overseas, um, interstate, committed to the team and when you're away it's 24-7, you, you don't get days off. Your family, if they were silly enough to come and spend some time at the tournament, don't see you anyway. Um, that, that's the perhaps the hardest, most difficult thing and you get to a stage in your life where that's no longer exciting or attractive, you know, that's, that's hard work. And when you start to think like that, I think it's time for you to consider that, it's, that you need a break. Oh, I think, you know, the major competitions that you play in, we've got a World Cup later this year, I've coached three teams in the World Cup um, that have, that have uh, won that tournament. We, there'll be a World Cup in another sport later this year if Australia finishes in the first 20, that'll be fantastic. You know, we're, we're going to a World Cup to aim to win the thing. And um, so those have been special moments. The Olympic Games are special uh, moments. But every year we play in major competitions that we, uh, we aim to uh, be outstanding at. And uh, I, I think that uh, all of those are special. I think that... Uh, I was, uh, when I was in politics, and I, that's where I came from to fall into this job, um, um, I was going to work in a suit and a tie every day, and uh, I found that a very interesting job, but incredibly demanding in terms of your lifestyle and your private life. This is, this is an improvement on that, I can say, but not uh, not that much because of the time that you spend away but I, I was then going to work in a pair of shorts and a tracksuit with a group of people who were highly motivated, very skilled and very ambitious to do well. That's a very good environment in which to work. I can commend it to anybody. I was very lucky to be given the task to work in that environment. And your job is to uh, hopefully extend and, and uh, uh, lift the bar for the athletes, most of whom I don't believe realise how good they can be. And, and if you are successful at doing that, then you can create a very good team. Creating a team to play well is just an incredibly difficult 
job when you think about it. There's 30 players in our squad. They all have different issues. They all have to work cooperatively together on the day of the game to get the result. That's a really difficult cocktail to mix. That's the great challenge, I think, of this job. Oh, it leaked out uh, bit by bit, I suppose, over the last couple of weeks. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, the, the players have been aware of that. Some of them are very delighted, I'm sure. Um, so I, I think that uh, um, for them, you know, they're, they're focused on wh where they want to go and what they can do in their careers. Uh, the coach hopefully provides an environment which extends them, and that's what I want to do. Well, you know, that would be fantastic. Uh, no one knows what the outcome will be. Certainly our aim is to, to play very well in those tournaments. If we do that, then we'll be in the main games. You spoke about that you come as family. Are you staying in Perth? Is there anything else on the agenda? I'm not planning on going anywhere else. I've got plenty enough to do every day without even uh, doing any extra things. But I, I expect that... Uh, I'll do some things in a voluntary basis. You know, there are, there are things I'm interested in that uh, I might get involved in, but uh, I don't want to canvas those at this stage. Before you do finish up, what do you hope your, your legacy will be on, on the sport? Well, I hope that, that our game, uh, our, our result will be uh, special, and I think in terms of team sport in this country, then uh, they are pretty good. Um, even in sports like um, cricket, which is the, the biggest international sport I think that uh, we're involved in in this country, it's the Commonwealth Games, the countries that you play against. We have to play against Germany and Holland and uh, Spain and Korea and a whole range of uh, Argentina countries that come United States for the women. Uh, outside that frame, it's a wide field and to do as well as the, this sport does in, in the men and women's game is uh, is pretty special. People say, uh, well known, I guess, how does it sit with you being known as one of Australia's greatest sporting coaches? Oh, you know, it's just a tag. You know, there's new people coming along all the time who are doing special things and sport develops. Every sport has its own flavour and... and uh, people involved. I think that in the 90s when I first started with the Hockey Roos, there's no question that uh, we changed the sporting landscape um, and indeed the sporting landscape in Australia was changed by uh, um, what you would call the amateur sports who, who were funded through the Australian Sports Commission or the AIS. Um, there was a time then when you know we had in, in my program, we had a, I had a staff of 18 and 19, and Australian Rules Football Clubs had staffs of five and six, and the Australian cricket team had five or six people working for them. Now, that's changed. Our funding's gone south and theirs has gone north. But uh, indeed, uh, it, was, uh, it was sports like ours, and it was the AOS that set the temperature. Well, I think you're always looking to change and develop and improve and get better. And sometimes the, the rules of the sport change, which allow that sort of thing to happen. And, uh, but what, what's happened generally in sport is that um, uh, people have looked uh, at other sports and they've tried to improve the way in which they, they go around it. Generally, though, everybody's much more flexible than they were. And um, so players are all-rounders, they have to be all-rounders uh, and there's less specialisation occurring. Um, that's not to say that the people who have special skills aren't still very good, that's generally something that's occurred, but for, say for instance in our game interchange, that rule changed in 1993. Um, how long did it take to seep into the game generally in, in some teams, in some places, over a decade? You know, we started embracing that in 1993 in the women's team and so got really good at it very quickly and it gave us, handed us a competitive advantage for quite a long time. And uh, same thing in the men's game, you know, there was various degrees of uptake but I worked with Fremantle Football Club at the beginning of this century 
and I tried to convince them they should interchange more. We were making about 20 interchanges a game. Now they're making 120, you know. Um, but it was it was too big a step at that stage. Now everybody does that, you know. Um, I think that uh, you, you have to be willing to make a difference and, and look at ways in which things can change. Do you still believe the Super Series format we see here is the future of the game? The, the, short, the 2020 style hockey? Well, you know, I think what the international body makes decisions that perplex us. They made one last week that we're going to play quarters in hockey now. And uh, that was uh, quite surprising for us. Uh, and they have a game for the for the Youth Olympics, which is five aside, which for me is silly and changes the game too much. But I think yes, less players on the field makes a bunch of sense, and uh, it makes a game in which it's harder to defend, easier to score. I think that that that's better for you if you have a low-scoring game where one goal can decide it and all of the vagaries of umpiring and uh, bad luck and all sorts of other things can play a role and uh, I think that's less interesting for me. Some people like that, um, but, but I like the idea of uh, making it um, harder to defend and therefore making people try and create goals. The interesting thing in our game is trying to create a goal. The exciting thing for the players is to, make, is, is to solve that puzzle of how you create goals. Uh, and so uh, that, that's always been my my view. You mentioned some highlights before. Are there any regrets, anything that you wish you could have done differently? Oh, look, we'll go to the World Cup in, uh, you know, seven weeks and we'll be as well prepared as we can be given all of the things the resources we have and all the things we've been doing but there'll still be things that you haven't done and there'll be no one we won't have a perfect team there'll be there'll be spots where we're vulnerable you'd love to be able to fill those in but sometimes you can't i mean uh, if alex ferguson has a problem in goalkeeping he buys the guy from spain Unfortunately, you know, if you have a problem in goalkeeping in Australia and hockey, you've got to make the guy from Toowoomba better. <laughs> uh, um, and so, you know, you can't... Do, do you understand what I'm saying? That's the coaching task. And so, you know, if, if we don't have the strikers that we need, um, we can't get somebody from uh, Madagascar. We've got to make our guys here better. That's the, that's the dilemma. And uh, every team has its vulnerabilities and its weaknesses. Uh, every team that I've coached has had that. Um, you hope that they're not exposed. Uh, you hope that you can cover them. You hope that uh, the overall system that you have, the vigilance of the players is such that you can overcome those deficiencies. You were saying you know, the all the major tournaments are going to be in your life, but surely there's one or two that stand out? Uh, quite frankly, no. You know, um, you know, as a coach, uh, each I, each year we s set ourselves up to play well in the major competitions. You know, and each year that I've been the coach, that's that's, and I see it as a continuous rolling thing. The team develops, evolves, gets better, changes, shifts. People come in and out. It, it's it's a live thing, you know, and emerging, continuously emerging. And, and that's the nature of it. I mean, we're all hurtling towards death, but we don't like to think about it. <laughs> uh, and I think that uh, um, I see that this is, you know, a continuum. Do you get more of a joy out of playing or coaching? Oh, playing's much more uh, self-satisfying, if you like, egocentric, and, and uh, it's, this is a different experience. This is about helping other people do well while you put yourself under stress, you know? So um, it, it's a different experience. It's a very satisfying one, though, because when people do succeed and do well and you see athletes develop and, and, and uh, extend themselves in a way in which perhaps they wouldn't have, then that, that's very pleasing. I wouldn't even speculate on that. 
I fully believe that the people who are working with me now are perfectly capable of doing the job and continuing, and and they will do it in a different way and and uh, and extend and improve it. But uh, they're, they're, you know, whatever Hockey Australia has in mind, they'll go through a process. And there's a lot of people out there with a lot of Australians coaching around the world. There may be, maybe there's someone from another place. But I think that uh, we're very, very well resourced in terms of coaches. There's a range of people from Australia coaching in other countries. But as I said, the, the, the people who are working with me now certainly have the capability of doing the job in an outstanding way. Well, it's a little bit daunting, but um, this is part of your life. You change and move on. You do something else, and and uh, I'm I'm ready for the end. You know, in in August, I'll be ready for for something else, and I'll, I'll be very satisfied with uh, with what we've done so far, uh, and what I've done uh, while I've been with this team. Do you start that process? We'll, we'll put it out publicly in the next two to three weeks. So uh, it will start, but you know the conclusion to it, to it will be well and truly after the Commonwealth Games. And to endorse what Rick said, I mean, we I don't want to speculate either on names, but you know we have a number of really quality coaches in our own system already. So, um, but it's you know it's a big big shoes to fill, and whoever fills it will fill it in their own unique and. Um, direction that they want to take the program. Do you look international? We'll just look for the best coach we can find. So there's, apart from speaking English, I think the, um, it'll be a pretty wide search. Thank you.